Hello. I wanted to do a quick video about something that is really close to my heart. Um, when a child dies, when is it okay to smile again? I lost a child and I've shared that in other videos. I lost my 18 year old son in a car wreck almost 10 years ago. Um, I also, we, our family, lost my nephew at 16, 11 years ago, also in a car wreck. And my daughter lost her baby when he was 12 days old. I have a friend, actually a cousin, who recently lost her baby at seven months old. He was born with an illness that he was never going to overcome. And so, although it was expected eventually, maybe expected eventually, we never really expected. Um, it's been devastating to her. And recently, she took her other children to a Halloween event, I think a pumpkin patch. And she posted some pictures on her social media, and someone said, geez, she's smiling a lot for having just lost her child. And my heart breaks for her that she would have to be subjected to that after everything else that she's been sub subjected to. But I do realize that if you've never lost a child, you have a deep sense of ignorance to the situation. That may sound mean to say it that way, but um, you cannot imagine you have no idea the devastation that it causes. And so I wanted to pose the question, when is it okay to smile again after your child has died? And the answer to that is whenever you can smile, whenever you feel like you can smile, it's never not okay to smile after your child has died. Believe me, the smiles are hard earned. Happiness is very, very out of reach. It is very difficult to grasp it for a very long time. I can speak from my own journey and I can say the first two and a half years probably, I actually, when I speak of it, I say that I was dead for two and a half years um, because I truly feel that way. You are emotionally void. You are dead. You, your body is walking around, but you literally think to yourself that what a cruel joke this is that my child died and that's where I want to be, but I have to be here. I still have to put one foot in front of the other. I still have to go to work. I still have to act like everything is fine. I have to be sensitive and aware of everyone else's feelings and emotions because I'm so hard to deal with now. I'm so difficult to deal with now. No one knows what to say to me. No one knows how to respond to me and everyone feels awkward around me, so I have to try to be the bigger person and I have to pull it all together and fake like I'm okay so that everybody else around me feels comfortable. And that's kind of where this, this girl was at. Should she have pretended? You know, she was trying to share a moment with her other children, her children that are still here present in this world, and she was trying to give them a moment of happiness and a smile came through on a photo and someone judged her and that that is sad and I guess the only good thing I can say about that is I'm very happy that that person is so dense to the situation that they literally don't understand it to that level because if they did that would mean they would have to lose a child the only way they could ever really comprehend although that was a very um, unempathetic comment to make, but the only reason they can ever really grasp what it feels like to walk in my shoes or her shoes or anyone's shoes that have lost a child is to be there too. So um, you will never understand 
what it feels like to come back home with your child left at the hospital, um, to make the decisions about your child's body and whether they want you want to or donate their organs or not, um, and then to wonder, you know, if you say yes, where they went. That's a whole other topic, but all of the decisions and choices and figuring out how you're going to pay for the, um, the funeral of a child who you expected, you would never have to face that. So no one is ever financially prepared to deal with such a situation because it's unnatural. It's completely out of the realm of most people's thought process that something like that could ever happen. Um, you know, you have to come home and you have to look at their room look at their belongings. You have to make a decision at some point, whether it's now or way in the future, you have to make a decision about what to do with all of their stuff. Do you keep it? Do you donate it? Do you burn it? I've actually had other parents tell me that they burned their child's things. They didn't know what else to do and they had a little ritual and burned them. Um, everyone reacts differently. Everyone you know, find, has to find their own path as to how they feel best at handling these things. But you have to do it. Um, I remember abandoning my whole entire house because I couldn't even deal with living in my house when my son died. And I remember looking at his things and you know it was a long time I, I packed up everything and I just kept it in storage for a long time I kept this certain things that I loved the most out and put them in a glass cabinet and the rest of the things I kept you know locked away and um, hurts very much to sit and look through those things but I remember distinctly one thing and that was going through his room and going through his dresser and going through his personal belongings, his socks, his underwear, and thinking, what am I going to do with these things? These things touched my child. And what do I do with them now? Everyone has to make their own choice as to what the answer is to that. But I'm, what I want you to learn from this video is when is it okay to smile? Every smile you can squeak in is a miracle at this point. When you're having to go through your child's things, when you're having to make these decisions about your child's body, and then as the years go by, when you're watching others that you know were the same age as your child or close or friends or whatever, and you're watching them hit milestones that your child never was able to meet, um, it's always there. You always are aware of it. And I remember times when I would be standing in a sea of people at the store and I would look up and I would see someone that looked like my child from the back or from the side or even from the face or the mannerisms or, um, his haircut or anything. And I would sit there and I would, or stand there and I would look and I would, I would envision in my head that it was really him just to have a moment of peace, even though it was not real, but to just have this moment where I felt like I was connected to him again. So it isn't easy for a parent who's lost a child to smile. It isn't easy, but you're trying so hard to continue living for the other people in your life because you know that's the best way to honor the child that that didn't get that chance. So don't be judgmental of a person who's lost a child. Don't be judgmental of how they react. Don't, you know, you're not the, the decider of whether they're handling it appropriately or not. It's an individual walk. It's a very individual walk in every person. I have, I have talked to so many people and communicated with so many people in the past 10 years that I have learned there is no one size fits all. Um, what one person can do or feels is right, another person is horrified by that decision. How could you do that? You know, it's just there are so many different paths, but all 
all of them are the path through grief. Grief. There are so many different paths through grief and the grief process. Don't judge someone. I hope this was just a little tidbit um, and maybe is valuable to someone that has uh, to deal with um, someone who's lost a loved one, lost a child. Um, I hope it helps you out to reconsider your position or to um, know how to extend a hand to that person. Until next time, have a wonderful day. Namaste.